Oh, good day viewers. What I'm going to do over uh, over the next few weeks is uh, document how the beach can recover from uh, pretty bad erosion, erosion experience. Now we know there's a lot of uh, controversial stuff going on down the northern beaches of Sydney. Um, south the Narrabeen where they've built this massive big ugly concrete wall to try and protect um, some house, the houses there that have been threatened to be falling into the ocean. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is uh, give you a bit of perspective. So there's other, op there's other, um, there's other techniques instead of building big concrete walls. Um, so there's one example up at Woolleye where they were pretty much in the same position 10 years ago as what those houses in Sydney are. But the, um, the people up there decided to, um, to, to follow the science and, and uh, rebuild the sand hills, plant out, it's a lot of, you know, and, and get that beach on a nice slow gradient so when the wave comes up, the energy dissipates and then flows back rather than hitting the wall and going back and what you end up there with is, is no beach pretty much. So this what I want to try and show here is this is a beach that's been eroded. It's been eroded over the years and I've watched it come and grow and be washed away and grow back. And you can probably see further down the beach. You know, there's some major cuts down there. Now, you know, I want to be clear here. This is there's no houses built here. This is a, a national national park, a small national park on the, on the beach. But what I'm going to do is just document over a series of um, weeks and show you how the uh, the beach can recover, and by using its natural resources, which is all of the, all of the of the debris that's on the beach. The biggest problem with Sydney beaches and city beaches is they get a lot of rubbish and they have to clean the beaches to keep them clean. Um, other places like Port Macquarie, they don't like to have the debris on their beach. And people complain to the council for pressure on them, they go out and they clean it. And they, but the problem being is that's what creates the beach, that's what helps build the beach. So when the wind blows, the sand gets caught in those on the pieces of um, timber and the, and the logs and the, and the sticks and the bits of weed, the seaweed. And that what helps build the beach and it grows from that. So I'll give you another look and then I'll come back in say a week or so or whenever I'm down here and I'll film it and I'll show you this from this exact spot and I'll show you over a period of time how the beach can grow. Um, you know, I apologise for the production quality. I don't have a microphone. I'm using a phone to film with. Um, so there's probably a bit of wind noise because it's, it's quite the ocean's quite wild at, at the moment. Although it's settling down now. But anyway, so I'll just um, I'll spin it back around and give you another look, give you a couple of looks, and then uh, we'll catch up later on. So we're back about seven months later um, and the beach is fully recovered. It's high tide so you have to take that into account but um, I'll give you a look.
So you can see a few of the remnants of the trees and the logs and stuff behind me over here. But the whole uh, height of, the, of the, the cut that was here when I first started recording this was, uh, you know, a good four, five foot high, you know, metre and a half. And now it's, uh, you can see how it landed right up next to the, uh, near the acacia. And then the spin effects will take hold and it'll uh, it'll grow and hold it all together until we get the next big storm and it'll all get washed away and the process will start again. <laughs>